its yield at all times by the permission of its Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets forth such parables for mankind so that they may be of the people of tadakkur, of the people who reflect and contemplate. So they may be of the people who reflect and contemplate and take lessons. From the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us amthal mahsusa for things that are ma'nawiyah. He has given us physical examples of moral and spiritual affairs, things that are incorporeal, that are unseeable. And what exists within the hearts and the minds of people of faith and guidance and the likes of these things that there are many, many parables that are found in the Quran and the Sunnah concerning. And it is for the believer to take advantage of this favor and this blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah has given him an example to understand something that will be harder to understand and not be as readily graspable had he not had such a parable and such an example to contemplate upon it, to reflect upon it. This is the difference between the lay person and the scholar. With the lay person and the student of knowledge, the serious student of knowledge, as the ta'zim of the nusus, the veneration that they give to what Allah said and what the Prophet wasallam said. A person may pass by a statement of Allah, the statement of the Prophet وسلم, ka kalimatin abira. As though it's just a passing word, a passing phrase without assigning due importance to it and without giving due diligence and contemplating upon it. And it does not, therefore, take its effect upon his heart and his character as it is supposed to. And he does not benefit from something that may be the key to his salvation or from the keys and the intricate causes of his salvation and guidance because he is heedless and because he is not cognizant of that which is given as a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and such things to the point that one of the salaf they said about the statement of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said that Allah, uh, he, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, gives parables to mankind, or he sets parables for the alimin. That indeed, in that are clear signs, meaning these parables are clear signs for the alimin, for the people of knowledge. And they said that he wept. They said that he wept because there were some of the parables of the Quran that he did not understand completely and fully. Why Allah has set forth such parables and the likes of these things. And he said, Lestu min an alimin. That I'm not from the people of knowledge. I'm not from the people of knowledge. And some of the scholars, they said, it's enough of a praise for knowledge that every person wants to be called knowledgeable even if they are ignorant. And nobody wants to be called ignorant even if they are as such. So this is from the keys of knowledge, the parables of the Quran. And this is a discussion that entire seminars could be done about just going over the parables in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The majority of parables in the Quran are about iman and guidance. The majority of parables in the Quran, they are about the reality of iman and tawheed, and the reality of shirk, the reality of guidance and misguidance. And this parable in Surah to Ibrahim is from those many parables about guidance. And it is from the most comprehensive of the parables and similitudes about guidance. There are three things that I mentioned. 
the usul of iman is furu' and is tamarat. The roots and foundations of faith, the branches of the tree of faith, and the fruit, the yield that is produced by the tree of faith. And there's a tremendous book that is written by the Alama of Al Qasim, Abdul Rahman ibn Nasir Al Sa'adi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that is entitled Al Tawdihu Wal Bayanu Li Shajarat Al Iman, a clarification and explanation concerning the tree of faith. And there's a book that is translated in the English language and is very important for a person to acquire a copy of and contemplate upon. It has been read and taught by a number of students in the West. From the first of them, our dear beloved elder and brother, Abu Wais Abdullah Ahmed Ali, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in a number of sittings and a couple of different occasions. And those recordings can be found. There's a tremendous book, Tawdihu al Bayan li Shajarat al Iman. He divides it into a number of chapters. A chapter concerning the reality of faith, a chapter concerning the reality of faith, meaning its usul and its furur, what it is built upon, the fun, the asal of faith, and he, meaning what must be there for a person to be a believer and not a disbeliever, and to be within the fold of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah and not outside of the fold of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the asal of faith, and the branches that are built upon that asal. The branches that are built upon those roots and that foundation which are the actions of the person and the character of the person that emanates as a result of what he believes about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what he believes about the Prophet sallallahu he believes about the last day and the unseen. Then he has a chapter, the second chapter that is about the muradiyat of iman. Those things that nourish a person's faith and cause his faith to grow. What nourishes his faith and cause his faith causes his faith to grow so that his faith produces the thamarat and the fruits that are desired by the person which is every good in this world and the hereafter. Every good in this world and the hereafter. That which strengthens a person's faith. So we want to discuss some of the elements that are found in this book that are from the parable of the tree of faith, from its fundamentals, from its branches, from its muqaddiyat, from the things that cause it to grow and develop. Because we know that an iman yatafawat, that the degree of a person's faith, that it fluctuates from one person to another and within one person according to his obedience and according to his disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and according to that strength of his iman or weakness of his iman will be the degree to which his which the fruits of faith are enjoyed by him and so because every person wants to benefit from the fruits of faith and from the benefits of being a Muslim from the benefits of being of those people that are loved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is necessary to understand the different elements that are found within this parable concerning the tree of faith. As for the asal of iman, then iman with Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the consensus of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah that was agreed upon by hundreds and hundreds of scholars in the first generations of Islam is that iman qawlun wa amal. Iman is statement and action. Yazidu wa yanqus. And it increases and decreases. It is statement and action. It increases and it decreases. And what is meant by a statement, the statement, what is meant by action, each are two things. There are two types of statements and two types of actions. There is the statement of the heart, which is the beliefs of the person. And the statement and the action of the heart, which is the result of his belief in his heart. Then there is the statement of the tongue, which is the entrance into Islam by professing the shahadatayn, 
And then there is the actions of the limbs which are at-ta'at, which is tahqiq al-iman, which is his proving the genuineness and trueness of his faith, the degree of his being a true believer or a weak believer or a hypocrite. And what is found of hypocrisy in actions that may emanate from a weakness of faith or even hypocrisy and he concerning an saying disbelief in his heart. And so according to what a person believes, which is a statement of his heart, will be the action of his heart. What he believes about Allah and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fills him with veneration. What he believes about the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him. And the mercy and the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fills his heart with love. Love of the good, love of Allah, love of what Allah loves, love of good for him, love of good for himself and for others. A love for those that Allah loves, a love for the believers. All of this is from the actions of the heart. And according to his love comes his hope and his fear. So he loves the good for himself and he hopes to receive it. And he hates harm for himself and he fears being afflicted with harm in this world and in the hereafter. And true hope, scholars they say, is to hope in the mercy and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by taking the means to the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, otherwise a person has amaniun batila. He has false hope. He has false hopes. True hope is that a person hopes in the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the forgiveness of Allah, these two things. That's why we find in the Quran the most frequently paired names of Allah together are Ghafurun Rahim. Ghafurun Rahim. Allah is forgiving and merciful. Allah is forgiving and merciful. So hope is that a person hopes for Allah's forgiveness and mercy. By taking the means to Allah's forgiveness and mercy, by making istighfar, by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by abandoning sin and disobedience, by repenting sincerely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by having remorse for their sin and their disobedience and the likes of these things. And anything besides that, a hope that does not produce an effect within his obedience to Allah, within his character and his behavior. And he is a false hope. It's a false hope. And it is a weakness in the genuineness of his hope, as he, if he truly hopes in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as much as that, the Salaf they said, as was stated by Al Hassan al Basri, Al Mu'minu yuhsinu dhanna billah fa yuhsinu al amal. The believer thinks well about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so he does well. The believer, he thinks well of Allah, and so he does well. And I mean, he does, he acts with ihsan, with excellence. He thinks excellent about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so he behaves with excellence. He thinks good about Allah, and so he does goodness. And the believer, he thinks poorly about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so he behaves poorly. The fajr, the wicked person rather, he thinks poorly about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so he behaves poorly. And so according to what a person knows about Allah will be these things that are called the action of the heart. According to the statement of the heart, what he believes about Allah will be the action of the heart. The action of the heart is built upon his love of Allah, his veneration of Allah, his hope in the mercy of Allah and his fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And love and veneration are connected together. A person loves Allah with a love that entails humility. This is the reality of the core of his worship. Worship in the Arabic language is a ghayatul hub ma'a ghayatul dhul. It's a dhul in general. And it is humility he worship is humility and more particularly Islamically worship is 
the highest level, the epitome of love for Allah, along with the epitome of veneration and subservience and humility for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so a person, they have this love of Allah that entails humility. This love of Allah because of His greatness and because of His perfection and because of His favor subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they have connected to that a hope in His mercy and a fear of His punishment. And these things, they are the core of the worship of the heart that come as a result of His creed and His belief. Everything in our belief and our creed increases us or is and we are informed of so that it will increase us in these three things which are love, hope and fear love, hope and fear love and which as we mentioned before is, which was, as we just mentioned is coupled with veneration, love and veneration they are coupled together, the same thing together and he, a venerable love you could say a venerable love a person has a love that is a respectful love a respectful love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love and veneration together and a person is both at awe at the greatness of Allah and in dread of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he along with hope and fear along with hope and fear scholars they give an example of that when they say that when the person says alhamdu Lillahi Rabbil Alameen All praises due to Allah Rabbil Alameen All praises due to Allah The Lord of all that exist When they understand that All praises due to Allah The one who is possessing of Every attribute of perfection To the highest degree All the attributes of Al-Uluhiyya Of Godhood All praises due to Allah The possessor of Uluhiyya wal ubudiyya And you have Godhood And the right to be worshipped Over all of the creation Rabbil Alameen, who is the Lord of all that exist. The Lord, the nurturing Lord. As much as that the word Rabb in the Arabic language has two qualities within it, which are At-Tarbiyya wa Rububiyya. At-Tarbiyya, which is nurturing, developing something. And he, Tanshi'atu shay'in min halin ila halin, min halin ila hal ila bulur al-kamal. At-Tarbiyya which is to develop a thing little by little until it reaches its perfection. Allah nurtures the creation, He develops the creation, completes the creation, perfects what is deficient within them, so on and so forth. At-Tarbiyah and ar rububiya ar rab All praise is due to Allah, the one who was possessing of all the qualities of Godhood and the right to be worshipped over all the creation. Rabbil Alameen the nurturing Lord of the creation. The nurturing Lord of the creation. The one who nurtures them and is their Lord. He nurtures them with His blessings and His favors and His guidance. And He is their Lord, meaning He created them. And they all belong to Him because He created them. They all belongs to Him. From His complete ownership of them and everything is His complete control over it all. This causes the scholars, they say, this causes a person to have the first thing from the three fundamentals of worship, which is Al Mahabba Ma'a Ta'adim. And he has venerable love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he believes Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, causes him to have venerable love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A love that is coupled with veneration, that is coupled with respect. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beyond what can be described. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. He is the possessor of vast mercy and the bestower of specific mercy. He is a possessor of vast mercy for all of the creation and the bestower of specific mercy, which is the mercy that is for the believers in this world and in the hereafter as a fruit of their faith and as a result of their faith. This causes the person to be filled with hope. Maliki Yawmiddin, the king, the sovereign, owner of the day of judgment, Tabarak wa Ta'ana, causes him to be filled with fear. Causes him to be filled with fear. Wa'anatil wujuhu lil hayyul qayyum. As Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said, on that day, 
all of the faces will be humbled in front of Allah al Hayyul Qayyum. وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ حَمَنَ ظُلْمَ And a person will be ruined who carries the burden of oppression on a day. The faces will be humbled for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَا تَسْمَعُ إِلَّا رَكْزًا Another verse in the people will You will not hear anything except for the quivering of the people's lips The trembling of the people The chattering of their teeth in terror The people will be shaking you won't hear anything except for the sounds of the people shaking and trembling and dread of Allah and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala wa gather yajma'u Allahu al-awwalina wal-akhirini miqati yawmi ma'alum. Hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Allah will gather mankind from the first of generations to the last of generations. لِمِقَاتِ يَوْمِ معلوم For the meeting of the known day أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً They will be standing for 40 years قِيَامًا أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً شَاخِيصَةٌ أَبْصَارُهُمْ And their eyes will be frozen upon the sky For 40 years the people will be staring in terror and dread at the sky يَنْتَظِرُونَ فَصْلَ الْقَضَاءِ Waiting for the judgment to begin. Waiting for the judgment to begin. If a person was taken as a prisoner for a crime that they committed and they said that you have between now and the United States of America, when a person commits a crime, there's usually a long period of time between the time they commit the crime and the time that they go to sentence. And that person, they sit and they think about what they did. And they think about how they would like to, and how they can beat the case, and how they would like to be pardoned by the judge, and so on and so forth. Imagine the creation, all of them, every human being standing barefoot, naked, and uncircumcised, staring at the sky for 40 years, waiting for the judgment to begin. So, in the statement of Allah, Maliki Yawmi Deen, the king of the day of judgment, this comes in an authentic hadith. That is the tafsir of the statement of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala in Surah Al-Zumar. When Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala he said, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبْضَتُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ They have not given Allah his just estimation that is due to him and the entire earth will be in his grasp on the day of judgment. وَالسَّمَوَاتُ مَطْوِيَاتٌ بِيَمِينِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ And the seven heavens we wrote up in his right hand. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushrikun. He is glorified and exalted above all that they falsely ascribe and worship to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. All that they worship besides him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And is a tafsir, is a hadith that is a tafsir of the statement of Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala. Quli man al mulkul yawm. And Surah al Ghafir, Surah al Mu'min. Which is also called Surah al Ghafir. The beginning of the Hawamim. There are eight surahs in the Quran that begin with Hamim. When Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He will say, Liman al Mulkul Yawm, who does the dominion and authority and kingdom, rule of the kingdom, belong to today? Lillahi al Wahid al Qahar. It belongs to Allah al Wahid, one who was unique. His names, his attributes, his actions, his glory, his right to be worshipped, Tabarak wa Ta'ala al Qahar, the one who was dominant in his authority. Yaghribu wa la yughlab, the one who defeats all and nothing can defeat, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. That Allah would take, when he has the seven heavens in one hand and the earth in his other hand, he will shake the universe. And he will say, Ana al Malik, Ana al Dayyan. I am the king, I am the judge. Ain al Jabbarun, Ain al Mutakabirun. Where are the tyrants and where are the arrogant ones? Where are the tyrants and where are the arrogant ones? So, of course, the fact that Allah is the Maliki Yawmuddin is terrifying. It would be a terrifying day and a day when Allah is Ghadban, when Ar Rahman is Ghadban. When the one who was full of mercy, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, the one who has 
the possessor of vast mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala beyond what can be imagined by the creation when he is ghadban when he is angry in a way that he had never that he would never have been angry in such a way before and will never be angry again what is it that caused ar-rahman to be angry with the creation to be ghadban except for their disbelief and their crimes and their heresies and so on and so forth and so here we have a number of names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah ar-Rabb ar-Rahman ar-Rahim al-Malik and the scholars they say that these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understanding these names of Allah the Surah Al-Fatiha begin with is the key to understanding all the names of Allah all of the meanings of all of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala go back to the meanings of these names Allah ar-Rabb ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and al-Malik Tabarak wa ta'ala What is the result of knowing about these names of Allah? Al-Mahabbatu ma'a ta'adheem Venerable love Wal-Raja'u wal-Khawf And al-Raja' Hope in Allah's mercy and forgiveness Wal-Khawf And fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala These three things they are the Arkan al-Ta'abbud al-Qalbi they are the pillars of the worship of the heart They are the pillars of the worship of the heart Everything in Islam goes back to these Three states of the heart Love, hope and fear Love, hope and fear There's a difference between our love, hope and fear of Allah Because a person has to have these three things Love, hope and fear to some degree To be within the fold of Islam If a person didn't love Allah Or didn't love anything that Allah revealed uh, if a person hates anything that Allah revealed Knowing that Allah revealed He's a kafir, mukhrij And in is kufrun That removes him from Islam If he doesn't venerate Because it's not just love It's what? Venerable love Respective, Respectful love Right? If his love is not coupled with veneration And he mocks anything In their religion then his mockery is what? If a person mocks something in the religion, the mockery of the religion is major disbelief that removes a person from the fold of Islam. Allah Taala said, "Wala in sa'altahum." If you were to ask them, munafiqeen, they were traveling. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and some of the munafiqun, they said, "Ma ra'ina mithla qur'ina ha'ula." We have not seen anything like these scholars of ours. Arghababutunan. Uh, what they say about the scholars from the Sahaba. Arghababutunan. They mocked the scholars, the carriers of the religion. Arghababutunan. Who are greedier in appetite. Wala akthaba al sunan. Or greater liars in their speech with their tongues. Wala ajbana inda liqa. Or more cowardly upon the battlefield. This is a statement of the Munafiqun. The Munafiqun are Akdabun Nas. They are the greatest liars amongst the people. They are the most greedy people amongst the amongst the creation as Allah described them in the Quran. And they are the most cowardly of the people. But they that is they call it projectionism in English, huh? Where a person has a mental illness or a sickness or a behavioral problem and he projects it upon others. A person is dishonest, he thinks everybody else is out to get him. He's, the dis he's a dishonest person. Uh, so they projected these qualities of theirs onto the scholars and said the scholars possessed them. Awf ibn Malik al Ashja'i, one of the well known companions. He said, "Kadabta, adu Allah, wa lakinna kamunafiq la ukhbiranna Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam amma qult." He said, "You have lied, O enemy of Allah, and rather you are munafiq." What you said about the scholars, who are the best of the creation, the scholars of the Sahaba. You have lied, O enemy of Allah, rather you are munafiq. I am going to inform the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam concerning what you said. When he arrived at the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
the revelation beat him to the Prophet ﷺ. The Messenger of Allah was already informed by the angel Jibreel what was uttered by the Munafiqun. Wala in sa'altahum. And then Allah He said, and if you were to ask them, La Yaqulunna, then they would say without a doubt, Innama kunna nakhudu wa nalab. You would just nakhudu wa nalab. You were just delving into conversation, trying to pass the time, so on and so forth. And we got a little carried away and we were just playing. Say was it Allah and His Messenger and His ayats that you were making fun of. Allah and His Messenger and His Ayat, Allah called the scholars his ayat. His ayat because they are evidences for the religion of Allah. The knowledge of the scholars is that which directs the people back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that which is pleasing to Allah. The scholars are the ones who understand the religion, they understand any the meanings of the religion better than anyone else. The scholars of Sunnah. La ta'tadiru. Do not make excuses for yourselves. قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِمَانِكُمْ But rather you have disbelieved after your belief. A person has to have some degree of venerable love. They have to love everything and venerate everything in the religion. This is the core of faith that must be there for a person to be a Muslim. It must be there for a person to be a Muslim. You must love everything that Allah revealed. And respect everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. How many people make light of this affair? And they hate things. The scholars, they say, if a person hates anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, he is a disbeliever due to the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَرِهُ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأَحْبَطَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ وَلَذِينَ كَفَرُوا As for those who disbelieve, then Allah Taala has placed His punishment upon them amalahum, and He has caused their actions to go astray. That is because they hate what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala revealed for ahbata amalahum. So He rendered their actions none of void. A person who hates anything that Allah revealed, and He is missing the core of faith. So why the scholars they say that major hypocrisy that removes a person from Islam that is connected to creed is rejecting the Prophet or rejecting anything that he came with. Hating the Prophet or hating anything that he came with. Or loving that the religion of the Prophet وسلم, that Allah's religion should be weak in the earth. Or hating that Allah's religion should be victorious in the earth. This is nifaqun akbar i'tiqadi mukhrij min al millah this is the major nifaq of creed that removes a person from the fold of Islam. So if a person doesn't have this venerable love, if he doesn't have the venerable love, then he is missing that which makes him a Muslim. He is missing that which makes him a Muslim. If a person doesn't have any hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he is not a Muslim. That is why Al Yas mi Rahillah Wal Qunut mi Rahmatillah were mentioned along with Shirk as the greatest of sins. To lose hope in the mercy of Allah, to despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Were mentioned by the Prophet وسلم, along with Shirk as being from the most major of sins and offenses. And this is where a person is regards a particular situation. Loses hope in the mercy of Allah. What about completely loses hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The greatest example of the harms of hopelessness and feeling as though a person cannot be forgiven is Iblis. Iblis. Al Iblas. Is that a person is hopeless? The name Iblis itself. And he is the one who is hopeless. He has lost all hope. Iblis, he didn't, when he committed a sin out of arrogance, he didn't ask Allah for tawbah like Adam did. Adam, he committed a sin, he repented to Allah. 
subhanahu wa ta'ala, he was remorseful. But rather, Iblis was arrogant. And he lost, he lost hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he wished destruction for mankind. He plotted against mankind from the beginning. Before Iblis refused to make sajda. The hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, I believe, either Abdullah ibn Mas'ud or Abdullah ibn Amr, collected by Imam Ahmed and Imam Muslim, authentically from the Prophet, وسلم, of course, it's in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet, وسلم, he said, لما خلق الله آدم في الجنة تركه ما شاء الله أن يتركه When Allah created Adam, meaning they created body and form of Adam in the paradise, he left him in that condition as long as he were to leave him. Meaning without a soul, the scholar said, explaining this hadith, فَجَعَلَ Iblis يَطْيفُ بِهِ يَنْظُرُ إِلَيْهِ Iblis circumambulated around Adam, circled around him. Ibn Kathir, he said, يَطْيفُ بِهِ And make tawaf around Adam, يَطْيفُ and he went throughout Adam. He said he came in the mouth of Adam and went out the backside of Adam, went through the entire body of Adam. Looking at Adam like a predator looks at its prey. He felt that Adam may be a threat. What is this creation? What is this creation that Allah has made? Is it a threat to me? It says of the spirit of the angels who are the brothers of the believers from mankind. And who realize the virtue of Adam because of the knowledge that Allah gave him ta'ala over them. Despite their reservations and fear that he will cause mischief and shed blood. And they recognize the potential risk from Adam and they were afraid of that and they expressed their concern to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Despite that, Iblis when he saw that Adam was ajwaf, and he saw the hollow parts of Adam, and he saw the scholars, they said ajwaf, meaning that he had a jof, he saw the stomach of Adam. He said, Lafirtu bihi. He said, I have beaten him. Adam wasn't even alive yet, he didn't have a soul yet. And he just saw the construction of Adam, the form of Adam, the body of Adam. He said, Lafirtu bihi. I've already beaten him. I've already beaten Adam. I've already beaten this person. خَلْقٌ لَا يَتَمَالَكَ Because he is a creature that cannot control himself. He is a creature that not, will not be able to control himself. Iblis was a conspirer. He was a schemer. Against Adam alayhi salatu was salam. And when he fell from glory, and when he fell from being amongst the malaika and being on it, amongst the heavenly host, instead of what? Instead of having hope in the forgiveness of Allah wa ta'ala, and being humble at the greatness and the power of Allah wa ta'ala, his conspiratorial nature refused to allow him to be hopeful. And to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he asked Allah for time. He said, Oh my Lord, delay me until the time that they are resurrected. Another verse, I swear by your might that I am going to lead them all astray. In one hadith, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, hadith Qudsi, he said to Iblis, in a hadith that is authentic, hadith Qudsi, he said, wa izzati wa jalali. And Iblis said that, la abrahu I will not leave them alone until I cause them to be ungrateful to you and until I cause them to disbelieve in you and so on and so forth. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala said, I swear by my might and my majesty that I will never stop forgiving them so long as they ask me to forgive them. That's why some of the Salaf, they said that Iblis 
tried to destroy mankind with sin and disobedience. And so the blow that is dealt against Iblis as a result of that is al istighfar. That when Iblis tried to destroy mankind with sin and disobedience, that the recourse mankind was given was istighfar was to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for their sin and their disobedience. And so then Iblis resorted to a greater scheme which is innovation in the religion. Because a person will never repent from innovation when he thinks that he is getting closer to Allah with what he is doing but that which Allah has revealed no authority for. So this is something that is tremendous. Any hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from the core of our religion. From the core of our religion Fear of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Is from the core of our religion The person who hopes for something that is valuable And he loves to acquire it and he hates to Risk it And he fears losing it As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Man khafa adlaj Wa man adlaj balag al manzil Ala inna sal'atullahi ghaliya he said that whoever is afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Whoever is afraid of losing the Jannah Whoever is truly afraid in his journey If a person is afraid while they are journeying Adlaj Then they're going to travel in the middle of the night They're going to travel in the late part of the night And he meaning they're afraid of what? They're afraid of the elements They're afraid of the highway robbers They're afraid of whatever person will be afraid of taking a journey in those early days. Man khafa adlaj is an authentic hadith like the Bible Dawood. Man khafa adlaj, the person who was afraid travels late in the night. Waman adlaj balag al manzil. He's going to journey even into the wee hours of the morning and the late night. And the person who does that is going to reach his destination because he made a sacrifice. He went the extra mile. Ala inna sil'atullahi ghaliya. Indeed, the commodity of Allah, the caravan commodity of Allah, that which a person hopes to acquire from Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Here it's a parable, it's another parable. Hmm. Indeed, the commodity of Allah, and people are journeying in a caravan and they have merchandise and commodities that are valuable and so on and so forth. If they want to, if they are freed, concerning their journey, concerning highway robbers, concerning and he, uh, the elements and so on and so forth and they're going to travel in the night time when it's cooler and when they'll be able to and he, it'll be harder for people to identify them and so on and so forth so long as they know the road whoever is afraid will travel even into the night and whoever does that balag al manzil as we know in authentic hadith that the earth is folded in the night for the traveler and whoever does that, he's going to reach his destination. Indeed, the commodity of Allah is valuable. It is invaluable. It's very precious. Indeed, the commodity of Allah is a Jannah. Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala, he said, Therefore, whoever loves, whoever hopes for a thing and loves acquiring it, then he fears losing it. These three things are mutalazima. They are, they are mutalazima. These three things, they are inseparably connected to one another. A person's love, hope, and fear. Are connected directly towards what they are connected directly to one another. So, on account of this statement of the heart, what he believes about Allah, the greatness of Allah, the beauty of Allah, the magnificence of Allah, the fact that Allah is singled out as being the bestower of every blessing, that Allah is the king and the judge of mankind and the controller of their affairs, and so on and so forth, will be the Action of his heart, his love, hope, and his fear it will determine and he, what goes on inside of his heart is his love, hope, and fear connected to Allah, or connected to the creation. Is it connected to Allah and his religion, or is it connected to, is it connected to Allah and to the hereafter, or is it connected to this world and the people in this world? And that will determine his behavior. So, what goes on inside of his heart determines his behavior, determines those qualities of the believer. What are the qualities of the believer? Shaykh Sa'adi rahimullah ta'ala, he says, as for the qualities of the believer, of the true believer, who has al-iman al-wajib, 
who has a mandatory level of iman and is even beyond that has completed his faith and what Allah has described in great detail in the Quran over and over again so that we can have details concerning our religion this is a detailed religion I just say we believe in Allah and that's it we believe what do we believe about Allah it's a very detailed belief we believe in the Prophet what do we believe about the Prophet why do we believe the Prophet Sallallahu is a messenger of Allah and he is the seal of the prophets and the messengers why do we believe that and many many reasons beyond what a person can count as Ibn Taymi rahimahullah ta'ala he said in his refutation of the Christians because the people are at so many different levels of comprehension and because the people have so many the, so so uh, so many ambitions that vary greatly between one another. Everybody wants different things. Then Allah has made tanwir al barahin al aqliya. He has given a great variety of different logical evidences that will convince each and every individual person there is an evidence for every person on the face of the earth that is sufficient for them to enter into the fold of Islam there is something that is available to convince that person to become a Muslim to believe that la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah so a person has a very detailed belief about who is Allah who is the messenger of Allah and why is he the messenger of Allah sallallahu who is Allah and why does Allah deserve to be worshipped what are the qualities of Allah of perfection and what are the qualities of imperfection that Allah is free and innocent from tabarak or ta'ana? What are the qualities of the Prophet Just as that is the case, Allah has described in detail the qualities of the believer. The qualities of the believer that come as a result of what he believes about Allah and the Prophet He said that as regards these qualities, وَصَفْ اللَّهُ mumin فِي كِتَابِهِ Allah has described the believer in his book First and foremost As being one who recognizes And believes in the truth Of all of the Beliefs of the religion of All of the matters of creed of the religion Secondly As being a person who wants what Allah loves and is pleased with. Thirdly, وَبِالْعَمَلِ بِمَا يُحِبُّهُ اللَّهُ وَيَرْضَاهُ And so he acts according to what Allah loves and is pleased with. وَبِتَرْكِ جَمِيعِ الْمَعَاسِي And being a person, a true believer, who abandons all sin and disobedience. وَبِالْمُبَادَرَةِ بِالتَّوْبَةِ مِمَا صَدَرَ مِنْهُ مِنْهَا And that he rushes to repentance concerning what? emanated from him of sin and disobedience where he fell into a sin and disobedience this is the core of the attributes of the believers these statements that he just mentioned that he believes in everything that Allah informed us of he recognizes and believes it all concerning all the matters of belief in detail in general and in detail and he wants what Allah loves and is pleased with from him he wants that for himself. And he acts according to what Allah loves and is pleased with. And he abandons sin and disobedience that Allah hates and is displeased with. And he hastens to repentance from that which he falls into of shortcomings in his good deeds and sin and disobedience. And he falling into those things that Allah has forbidden. وَبِأَنَّ إِيمَانُهُمْ أَثَّرَ فِي أَخْلَاقِهِمْ and he has described them as their faith, their iman, having had an impact and an effect in their character, aqwalihim, and an impact and an effect upon how they speak and what they say. Wa faalihim al athar al tayyiba has a beautiful, pure, tremendous effect upon their character, their morality, their statements, and their actions. فَوَصَفَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِالْإِيمَانِ بِالْأُصُولِ الْجَامِعَةِ So he described the believers as believing in the comprehensive fundamentals of faith which is to believe in Allah and His angels and His scriptures and His messengers the day of judgment and the qadr 
that which is good and that which is bad that happens in the life of a person is all decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His justice and His mercy and His wisdom and out of knowing what is best for the creation subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنُّهُمْ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِكُلِّ مَا أُوْتِيهِ الرُّسُلُ كُلُّهُمْ وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ and that they believe in everything that was received by the prophets and the messengers, all of the prophets and the messengers. And they believe in the unseen. And he described them with hearing and obeying. They hear what Allah has said and they obey what Allah has ordered. And submitting inwardly and outwardly. وَوَصَفَهُمْ بِأَنَّهُمْ And then he described them in Surah Al-Anfal, verses number 2 through 4, the following tremendous descriptions. إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ That when Allah is mentioned, their hearts tremble. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا And when his verses are recited to them, they increase in faith, a certain faith. وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And they place their reliance upon Allah. الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ They completely establish, correctly establish their prayer and they spend from what we have provided for them in our greatness. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ Indeed, these ones, they are the believers in truth. These ones, they are the true believers. وَوَصَفَهُمْ بِأَنَّ جُلُودُهُمْ تَقْشَعِرْ وَعُيُونُهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعَ and he described them, these true believers, as people whose skins tremble and their, eye, and their eyes shed tears. And their hearts soften and find peace when they hear the verses and the evidences of Allah wa and the remembrance of Allah, the mention of Allah. يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ فِي الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ And they are people who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while in private and in public. وَأَنُّهُمْ يُعْتُونَ مَا آتَ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلًا And they are people who do what they do of good deeds while their hearts are afraid أَنَّهُمْ إِلَى رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ That it will not be accepted from them that it is not at par that which is acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so they are afraid that their actions are not good enough and they see themselves as never having done enough. And their hearts are in a state of trembling fear because they know that they are returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As comes in a hadith greater to be Hassan by Shaykh al Albani rahimullah ta'ala that if a person was to fall into sajda from the time that he was born to the time that he died, haraman fi maradatillah, if a person was to constantly have been in sajda continuously, from the time that they were born to the time that they died, reaching a very old age, doing nothing but seeking Allah's pleasure, لحقيره يوم القيامة, that he will view that to be nothing on the day of judgment. He will view that to be nothing on the day of judgment. And one narration that malaika they will say, Subhanaka ma abadnaka haqa ibadatik. On the day of judgment, the malaika, they will say, Glory be to you, we have not worshipped you as you deserve to be worshipped. So the believer, the true believer, a person who does what he does, he fasts, he prays, he gives in charity, he sacrifices for the sake of Allah, and he feels as though he has not done enough and that he has not done anything. He is afraid that it will not be accepted from him. Not because Allah does not keep his promise, but because he feels as though it was deficient and not done at the level of correctness and excellence as acceptable by the king of all kings, Tabarak wa ta'ala. Because of his veneration, his recognition of the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sees his actions to be little. وَوَصَفَهُمْ بِالْخُشُوعِ فِي أَحْوَالِهِمْ عُمُومًا He described them as being people who have khushu' who have venerable and humble focus in all of their behaviors, all of their states. They are always in a state of khushu and broken humility and focus on what they are doing and genuine. What they are doing and not distracted with the salati khususan. 
In general, they are like that at all times and particularly during their salat, especially in their salat. وَأَنَّهُمْ عَنَ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ And that they are people who are averse and disinterested in vain and idle speech and false entertainment. وَلِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ And they are people who perform purification of their souls and their wealth. وَلِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ And they pray, and they safeguard their chastity. إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ and they don't have relations intimately except with their wives and their right hand possessions. وَأَنَّهُمْ بِشَهَادَتِهِمْ قَائِمُونَ And that they abide by and stand by their testimonies. وَلِأَمَانَتِهِمْ وَأَهْدِهِمْ مُرَاعُونَ They are people who safeguard and protect and honor their pacts and their agreements and their covenants and their trust. وَوَصَفَهُمْ بِالْيَقِينَ الْكَامِنَ الَّذِي لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ and he described them as having true trueness in their statements and their actions. And that they struggle with their wealth and they struggle with their lives in the path of Allah. Let's give it a couple minutes. We're almost finished. You can call the other and we'll pray immediately afterwards. And he described them with certainty for their Lord concerning all that with sincerity for the Lord and all that they do and all that they leave off, whatever they do and whatever they don't do and whatever they abandon is according to seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely for His sake. وَصَفَهُمْ بِمَحَبَّةِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ He described them as loving the believers. وَالدُّعَاءِ لِإِخْوَانِهِمْ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ السَّابِقِينَ وَالْلَاحِقِينَ And that these true believers, they make dua for their brothers in faith from the believers that preceded them in faith and the believers who came after them. وَأَنَّهُمْ مُجْتَهِدُونَ فِي إِزَادَةِ الْغِلِ Some of the salaf, they said that the believers are in nothing, the, the, that your deceased from the believers are in need of nothing greater than dua. They need nothing greater than your dua. They make dua for those that have passed from their brethren. They make dua for the righteous scholars of the past. They make dua for those that they have benefited from. They make dua for those people that were pioneers in their communities. They make dua for those people that paved the way for them to believe and to receive this knowledge and to receive iman by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنَّهُمْ مُجْتَهِدُونَ فِي إِزَالَةِ الْغِلْ مِنْ قُلُوبِهِمْ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And that they are people who strive hard to remove any type of hatred or malice from their hearts towards the believers. وَبِأَنَّهُمْ يَتَوَلَّوْنَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَعِبَادَهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And they are people who are allies to Allah and allies to the Messenger and allies to the believing slaves of Allah تبارك وتعالى وَتَبَرَّعُونَ مِنْ مُوَالَةِ جَمِيعَ دَاءِ الدِّينَ And they free themselves and are innocent of having alliance towards any of the enemies of this religion. وَبِأَنَّهُمْ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ from the description is that they order with all goodness. They forbid our evil. And are obedient to Allah and His Messenger devoutly in all of their affairs. And so Allah in these descriptions has combined between true genuine beliefs and complete certainty and total inaba to Allah, total turning to Allah in all of their affairs. That produces as a fruit of it, submitting to Allah and doing what He has ordered. And staying away from what He has forbidden. And abiding by and standing within the parameters within the parameters, the perimeters of the boundaries of the Sharia, the boundaries of this religion. فَهَذِهِ الْأَوْصَافِ الْجَلِيلَةِ وَهِيَ وَصْفُ الْمُؤْمِنَ الْمُطْلَقَ الَّذِي سَلِمَ مِنَ الْعِقَابِ وَاسْتَحَقَ الثَّوَابِ He said these majestic qualities, they are the qualities of the absolute believer. Of the absolute believer who is free, who will be free of Allah's punishment on the Day of Judgment and deserving of His reward on the Day of Judgment. وَنَالَ كُلَّ خَيْرٍ رُتِّبَ عَلَى الْإِيمَانِ 
and we have benefited and acquired every goodness that resulted from his faith. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ رَتَّبَ عَلَى الْإِيمَانِ فِي كِتَابِهِ مِنَ الْفَوَائِدِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ مَا لَا يَقِلُّ عَنْ مِئَةِ فَائِدَةِ For verily Allah has mentioned that their results from faith. He mentioned in his book that there are benefits and fruits that result from faith that are no less than 100 in number in the Quran. كل واحدة منها خير من الدنيا وما فيها. Each of these over 100 benefits of faith individually are better than this world and all that it contains. They are better than this world and all that it contains. And then after the adhan, we'll hear a mulakhas and a summary of a number of these fruits. Inshallah, make the adhan. Allah wa ta'ala as a result of iman. Resulting from Iman has caused from the effects of Iman to be that a person will attain and acquire Allah's being pleased with them. And this is greater than anything else in existence. You imagine that Malaika take the soul of a person, they give him the glad tidings of a ruh wa rayhan wa rabbun ghayra ghadban. Abshiru bil rawhi wa rayhan wa rabbin ghayri ghadban as comes in one authentic narration that the time of taking the soul from the believer they will say glad tidings of a rawh wa rayhan the scholars they say meaning the bliss of the soul and the bliss of the body wa rabbin ghayri ghadban and a lord that is not angry with you and a lord that is not angry with you imagine the person his elation his happiness his thrill at the time of death hearing those words, may Allah make us from them. That he will be those people who receive Allah's being pleased with him, which is greater than everything. And he has made to result from faith the entrance of paradise and salvation from the fire. And safety from the torment of the grave. And from the difficulties and hardships of the day of judgment. And the various states that people will go through on the day of judgment. And that a person will receive a complete glad tiding. Glad tidings in this world and in the hereafter. The glad tidings in this world is the people's love of him and they're speaking well of him despite the fact that a person doesn't want popularity for himself as was said by the Prophet Wasallam. When they asked the Prophet Wasallam about the thana, the praise of people for one another. A person sees something of goodness from a person and so they speak well of that person. Prophet he said, Tilka ajil bushra al mu'min. This is from the immediate glad tidings of the believer. This is from the immediate glad tidings of the believer. So the glad tidings that he is loved by the creation, respected by the creation, even though he doesn't want that for himself. As was said by Fudal ibn Iyad, he said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, Man arada an yudhkar, fala yudhkar. Wa man arada alla yudhkar, yudhkar. The person who wants to be mentioned and remembered will be forgotten. And the person who doesn't want to be remembered or mentioned will be remembered. And the believer, he doesn't want recognition, he doesn't want fame, he doesn't want glory, he doesn't want any of those things. But rather, it is from the favors of Allah upon him to encourage him in what he is doing and to give him support in what he is doing and the likes of these things. And Allah wa ta'ala make us all better than what the people may think of us and forgive us for what they don't know about us. So he receives the glad tidings in this world, which is the love of the believers, their respect, their admiration, so on and so forth. And he receives the glad tidings in the hereafter. thabat fi dunya ala al-iman. From the fruits of iman is that it causes him to be firm in this world upon it. The more he has iman, and the more his iman increases, the more Allah will cause him to be firm upon it. As Allah said 
and the statement that we heard in the beginning of this class about the tree of faith يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ وَيُضِلُّ اللَّهُ الظَّالِمِينَ وَيَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ مَا يَشَاءُ That Allah will cause the believers to be firm يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا He will cause and be firm because of القول الثابت because of the belief and statement that is firm the statement لا إله إلا الله in this world and in the hereafter and Allah will misguide the dhalimeen, the oppressors, and he does as he will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from the fruits of faith is a thabat, is being firm upon the path with ta'at, and being obedient, and increasing in obedience. As the Salaf, they used to say, that indeed from the reward of a hasana is a hasana to ba'daha, from the reward of one good deed is that it leads to another good deed. Good deeds lead to one another. And from the evil of a sin is that one sin leads to another. وعند الموت وفي القبر على الإيمان so causing to be firm in this world upon faith and obedience to be firm at the time of death and to be firm in the grave upon faith as they will come to the believers the malaika to angels منكر النكير will come to the believers in their grave, and they will question him about who is your Lord, what is your religion, and who is this man that was sent to you, in the Prophet When the believer answers those questions correctly, and one narration that is authentic collected by Imam Ahmed and others, the Malaika, they respond, عَلَى الْيَقِينِ كُنْتَ وَعَلَيْهِ مِتَّ وَعَلَيْهِ تُبْعَثُ Allah. You lived upon certainty, and so you died upon certainty and you will be resurrected upon certainty insha'Allah a tremendous statement because you lived upon certainty you died upon certainty and you will be resurrected with certainty meaning you will not be you have nothing like خوفٌ عليهم ولا هم يحزنون you have nothing to be afraid of and he is not an uncertain future for you it is not an uncertain future for you but rather just as you lived upon certainty you died upon certainty and so you can be certain about what awaits you, insha'Allah. So they will be firm at the time of the questioning, just as they were firm at the time of their death, and firm during their life. Upon iman and tawheed, wal jawab and nafi sadeed, and giving the beneficial correct answer. وَرَتَبَ عَلَيْهِ الْحَيَاةُ الطَّيِّبَةِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْرِزْقُ وَالْحَسَنَةِ وَالْرِزْقُ الْحَسَنَةِ and likewise Allah causes a result of Iman that a person will live an enjoyable life in this world and he will have a good state of well-being and sustenance and wealth in this world or that which is sufficient of sustenance in this world and Allah will make a simple life easy for him and he that which is and he yusra and he in the path of ease easy for him and he will make the difficult life far from him and he will give him peace in his heart and calmness in his soul and complete satisfaction with Allah and his religion what he has of the things of this world and his Affairs will be in a state of correctness and rectitude according to his liking. And it will bring about the righteousness of his offspring. And Allah will cause the offspring of the believer to be the coolness of his eye. Meaning that they will be upon obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the fruits of Iman is that Allah will cause the believer to be patient. When tested and stricken with calamity, Allah Taala remove burdens from them, and defend them from all evils, and according to their level of faith, He will give them victory over their adversaries. And from the fruits of faith is that Allah Taala removes. Blame 
from the person who did something forgetfully, wal jahil, or out of ignorance, wal mukhti minhum, or accidentally. Wa anna Allah lam yadha alayhim al asar, that Allah has not made anything difficult, uh, anything difficult and weighty upon them concerning their religion. Bal azalaha, but rather He has removed difficulty from them concerning their religion. It is easy to understand and easy to practice. Bal azalaha wa lam yahmilhum. But rather he has removed them from them and has not burdened them beyond their scope. From the fruits of faith is that he will forgive them from their sins according to their level of faith and the strength of their creed. And he will guide them to repenting sincerely. So Iman is the greatest means to lead to nearness to Allah and bring you close to His mercy and bring you close to attaining His reward. And it is the greatest means of your sins being forgiven. And of calamities being removed and lessened and lightened for you. And the fruits of Iman in detail are very, very many. And in summary, the fruits of Iman are khayratul dunya wal akhira. Murattaba al Iman is that all goodness in this world and the hereafter is a result of faith. Kama an shurur murattaba ala faqdihi. Just as all evil results as a lack of faith and a weakness in faith. Wallahu alam. And each of these fruits of faith as a shaykh said they are better than this world and everything that it contains. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yujadil lana imanana to renew our faith and to strengthen our faith. Wa in yuthabitana bil qawla thabit fil hayat dunya wa fil akhira wa yawma yaqumu al-ashhad and to make us from those that are strong upon the statement that is thabit, that is firm of la ilaha illallah in this world and in the hereafter and on the day that the witnesses will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala